you are. So here are five traits of pathological demand avoidance you probably have missed. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia, and I make weekly videos all about this type of stuff. So if you're new around here and you'd like to learn more about these subjects, make sure to hit the subscribe button by clicking that notification bell down below. And if you're watching on Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, make sure to give this page a follow so you see daily videos from me. Okay guys, so moving on, we are talking about pathological demand avoidance or PDA, which I'll refer to from now on. Now PDA is something that impacts people who are on the autism spectrum and it is how you basically demand avoid. So when, when somebody's asking a demand on you, you avoid it, you, you curve it, you go away from it. Now I've done a couple of videos on demand avoidance before and pathological demand avoidance, but I feel like there's five things that really stick out to people who have PDA that would typically be ignored. So people wouldn't even know that they had PDA. Now, this may all be confusing. We're gonna break it down right now in five simple steps. So the first one is lability of mood. Now, a person with a PDA will have mood control issues and can be shown to change their mood from moment to moment. Like one minute they may be really happy and then super, super sad. And then the other minute they may be really angry, but then really, really happy, just moment to moment to moment. This is because of the way that pathological demand avoidance comes out in the person when the person is having demands put on them, and especially lots of demands as well. If the person is on the autism spectrum, then it could be a sensory overload mixed in with PDA, and this is the kind of result that you actually get. So it's worth noting that if someone's mood is changing up and up and down, this may be a characteristic or trait of pathological demand avoidance that you probably wouldn't really thought about. Comfortable in role play and pretend play. Now, autistic people have issues with um, understanding social conventions, but because of the use of masking in social situations, and I've done a whole video on masking, which I'll try and leave a link for somewhere in the cards, a person with PDA will be very comfortable in playing games where they have to pretend to be somebody else, like Dungeons and Dragons, for instance. I'm a huge fan of playing that game. Or if they are playing games where they want to become somebody else, or acting, for instance. This is somewhat of a big strength within PDA and someone with pathological demand avoidance. And so it's something to look out for. And if you combine this with, you know, the liability of mood, then you're pretty sure that this person probably has PDA as part of the ongoing neurological conditions. So number three is that the person may have hyper moments and cry a lot. So due to the mood and emotional control issues, a person with PDA uh, may have hyperactivity moments where they seem really, really hyperactive. And similarly, they'll have moments of really deep, dark, crying depression. And these are two extremes of that mood liability, but these are more kind of like hyperactive versus really, really depressed. And that can fluctuate and swing up and down, which is typically not seen in people of neurotypical sense because they just are a typically like one type of mood. And then maybe they'll get upset, or maybe they'll cry, and then maybe they'll get really super hyperactive or something. But people with PDA are like just up and down, just like a crazy mountain or like a jagged graph. So number four, they may have selected mutism. Now, a PDA person can go sometimes in displaying that they have selected mutism in a situation like social events or social gatherings or family gatherings, family dinners, because they'll kind of reclusively return into themselves and then just kind of back out the situations, almost like they're too overwhelmed to even speak. So they become a selective mute and just retreat back into themselves. This is quite common with PDA and combined with the other traits on here, would definitely give you a diagnosis of PDA if you are displaying this type of selective mutism in those situations. So number five is triggers that may be hard to pin down. Now, you may not notice that a person with PDA can get triggered at random times, but you are not able to really figure out or notice what the issue is. You know, like, what is the trigger? Like, say you walked into a busy restaurant and somebody was screaming, and then that triggered somebody with PDA. You'd be able to identify the trigger, but sometimes a person with PDA will just get completely triggered for no reason, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, where's this trigger? I can't find it. This is something typically that happens with PDA because it could be a host of things. It could be something that happened ages ago and is now repercussing it right here, right now. So having said that, if you see someone with all these five traits, then it probably do have a PDA condition and be worth checking out. See if you can get a formal diagnosis for actual therapy for this to help it, not cure it because it's impossible. If this video was helpful, please share it on your social media and give it a thumbs up. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.